What's up guys, it's Baradis here. Today I'm going to be making sort of a different video, sort of a commentary style video. I know it's a lot different than what I normally make, but I kind of felt like I just wanted to try something different. And uh, today we're going to be talking about a little situation that happened recently where, believe it or not, somebody kind of tried to cancel me. That's, that's what I'm considering it. Somebody really thought, yeah, they're going to try to cancel somebody with 22 subscribers. And this all went down on my Instagram page, at BraditzDB. Y'all should definitely, you know, give it a little follow, even though I don't really post anything, but check that out. And so it all started on a Monday morning. It was about 7.30 a.m. when I felt my phone vibrate. It was a notification from Instagram. It came from a really, really weird name, and it just seemed like some spam, so I didn't really think much of it. This was until I noticed it wasn't just some regular spam, but this was actually a reply to something that was in my girlfriend's posts. So I thought I would go take a look at it. And as you can see, this is not just regular spam. These are all links to individual tweets. And if you look at the bottom, it says, join the Twitter, check out what he liked. Now, I didn't know really what to think at the time. I was really only thinking of, how do I explain this to my girlfriend in a way that she can understand? Because this made no sense. Somebody going to my girlfriend's page and spamming her with my tweets, which you can't even press, by the way. <laughs> the, the links are all like, you have to go into Google and type in the URL. So I'm immediately thinking like, oh, this is, these are some of my raunchy tweets. This is probably some of my bad tweets that, you know, people want to get out there. People want to know that I tweet. But I, I typed in the URL for two of these tweets, and it, they were honestly some of my more tame tweets. Me versus the 13-year-old on Xbox Live that fucked my mom. This is definitely one of my more tame tweets. And, and the other one that I looked at was even more tame. A story. One time an old lady asked me to get her medicine that was on the top shelf and I said, eh, you live long enough, and fucked off. One time I asked this Canadian guy, yo, give me the medicine from the top shelf, and he said, eh, you live long enough, and fucked off. I, I mean, I don't understand why anybody's trying to expose me for these tweets, they're, they're not really that bad. Granted, the other tweets that were there probably were worse, I mean, I've got some pretty raunchy tweets back from like a couple years ago, and who knows how long this person's digged. But this just goes to show that the level they're at, and, and uh, how easily people can really get offended out here. But it doesn't necessarily stop there. This person went on a complete tyrant, spamming that same block of tweets that you saw earlier on almost every single one of her posts, and even DMing her the same tweets in her DMs, putting the individual links to the tweets that would pop up in the private messages. And does it stop there? Well, have I got news for you, because it doesn't. This person even went to the lengths of going to the people that she followed, the people that don't even know me, and private messaging them those same tweets and going into all of their posts and spamming that same block of tweets that I was talking about. And I know I said it earlier, but I'm going to say this one more time. This was on a Monday morning. This was 7.30 in the morning on a Monday. I'm at work. I do work a full-time job, and I'm assuming that this person doesn't. This person probably lost their job because of the quarantine, and now they just have too much time on their hands, and so they have to go bother random people that don't even know them. So after a while of the spamming, I got a little bit sick of it, and during my break time, this is at about 9.30 now, so this has been going on for two hours. At around 9.30, I had to let some people know, and I had to message my girlfriend saying, hey, I have no idea what the fuck this is or who this person is, but just ignore it. Even posting on my story for all of my followers to go report that account in hopes to, to get it suspended or get it banned while this was all going on, which I believe it did at some point, because that, that name went away, but... That still wasn't the end, because I started to see that same spam in my notifications, but from a different name. That's right. This person went through the lengths of making multiple different Twitter accounts to spam people that they don't even know with my tweets. Honestly, being a YouTuber with only 22 subscribers and having pretty much no clout, I was actually kind of proud of myself, believe it or not. I was like, man, I have I have a fan this big, somebody that's going to these lengths because of something that I did. It, it was genuinely flattering. I really took it as a compliment. And around this time at 9.30 a.m., you can bet your ass it was still going on. And at this point, my girlfriend had waken up and she had pretty much said, yep, you know, I don't blame you for any of this. I, I'm not even going to look at any of those tweets. This person's just bothering me at this point. And she just really just wanted it to stop. Even going to the lengths to post on her Instagram story how weird this person was and how disgusting it was that this man would go to the lengths of going through people that they didn't know and private messaging them tweets to somebody else that they didn't know. Even asking all of her followers to go and report these accounts, but I'm 90% I'm sure this guy has no life and he would have made 80 more accounts if we had got that one banned. And I'm going to repeat this one more time. This person was going through all this trouble for two hours at this point for somebody that has 
22 subscribers <laughs> on YouTube, 30 followers on, on, on Twitter, and then like 35 or 40 at the time, it was 40, on Instagram. For all, all this, are you trying to cancel me? You can't cancel me. How are you going to cancel somebody that's not on? Now what I find really interesting about this block of tweets is the bottom part of it all. Join the Twitter, check out what he liked. And the reason why I think this is so funny is because the person that's saying this wants you to go look at my likes because I like a lot of not safer work on Twitter. But the catch is, is my Twitter's public. I know people can see that. I'm horny on main. I have never given a fuck about that. And in response, I took to Twitter and said the exact same thing. In fact, I kind of memed the whole situation because I wasn't really taking it seriously at all. I mean, why would I? But after another two hours of this happening, yes, this went on a whole four fucking hours. This person was spamming people they did not know and people I didn't even know. My tweets and attempts to expose me. This went on for four hours on a Monday, but it finally ended and it was a breath of fresh air. Now, I had already known from the beginning that this was probably just some random person on the internet that either stumbled upon my YouTube or my Twitter. I figured my YouTube because my YouTube promotes both my Instagram and my Twitter. But this left a lot of speculation. My girlfriend was theorizing that this might have been somebody that we knew. This might have been somebody that she knew trying to take me down. But it was all just conspiracy and I firmly believe that this is just some rando on the internet that really has nothing better to do with their lives. And while unrelated to the topic, that's all I really feel cancel culture is. It's just a lot of people that have too much time on their hands and they're power tripping because they think they can control what somebody says and what somebody does over the internet. And honestly, it's kind of hard to argue that that's the truth, especially recently due to all the canceling that's been going on in recent times. It seems like most people are just kind of getting used to it now and they're used to the power trip. They know that they can make these things happen. They know that they can cancel people. And so it almost seems like people are just kind of doing it for sport now. Cancel culture has always been a thing. It's been going on for an extremely long time, but I would love to argue the fact that it's happening a lot more now. In fact, I want to go back on the point that I made earlier about canceling people being a sport. I, I really like to consider it a video game that has points. When you're going for people with 22 subscribers on YouTube trying to cancel them, when you're going for that person, it really just seems like you're trying to keep a score. It's, it's like clout within the cancel culture. You can say, hey, I canceled 11 people in the last month, <laughs> and it's, it's clout. It's actually clout. That's what gets you noticed. And I can almost guarantee you that this person walked away from that situation thinking, man, I did such a good job, I really showed that guy, his girlfriend's probably going to break up with him and all of his friends aren't going to talk to him anymore. I mean, if by the off chance that this person is watching this video, <laughs> I, I hate to break it to you, but you honestly just look like an idiot. The only things that were said about this person by the people that were affected by this situation was that they were weird and kind of obsessed. I feel like it's really cool already being able to say that I've survived being cancelled, but it does make me think about the future. If this is what it's been like already, I'm wondering if, if I somehow make it on this platform, what are people going to think about you know, my older videos or my older tweets when I have a larger audience? Now while that's more than likely never going to happen, I don't think I have to worry about cancel culture coming for me. Uh, especially with the stipulation being that I have to be a bigger YouTuber, I'd still like to think I would probably react in the same way where I would just shrug it off and probably talk a lot of shit. Which more than likely isn't the best idea considering other YouTubers' track records. Whenever that sort of thing tends to happen, they kind of stay cancelled. I mean, look at Leafy is here for example. He's banned on both Twitch and YouTube at the moment because of his shenanigans. But at this point, I'm pretty much just rambling, so to come to the conclusion of the story, all I really did was I made a new private Instagram and asked for my followers that knew me personally to go over and follow that account instead. And now, the account I have that I want you all to follow is pretty much just for shit posts and memes exactly like my Twitter. And with that, I think I'm going to call it a video. I really don't know how well this video is going to do or how it's going to look after it's all finished being edited. But I really hope you all enjoyed. I really just wanted to do something different. I wanted to try to experiment, especially in this current time in my current channel and how, <laughs> I guess, small it is. This is the perfect time to experiment and try new things. Who knows? Maybe I'll like doing commentary videos a lot more than I like doing the gaming videos. But with all that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Leave a like, comment, let me know what you think of the different format that I've tried using. Subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Maybe it'll be a gaming video. Maybe it'll be another commentary video. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. Anyways, peace.